Well, uh, my last question or the last topic I'd like to get to is you also wrote an article. It was published just yesterday in which you uh, published on your website as well as on Truthout. Uh, the title of that is Trump's support for Israel's killing of Iranian scientists could lead to war. Um, on November 27th, uh, Iran's top nuclear scientist was assassinated. Uh, Israel never formally claimed responsibility for this assassination, but it's pretty obvious and they've alluded to it, I, I guess. Um, and this, you know, this came at a time, I mean, like we were just discussing, I mean, we're weeks away from the inauguration before the presidency is passed over, uh, the role of presidents passed over to Biden. Um, what is the purpose of doing this, of assassinating the top Iranian sci uh, nuclear scientist right now? Uh, what do you think the purpose of that is as far as how the Trump administration is calculating and, and scheming with all of this? Well, Trump has been doing Netanyahu's bidding from the time he took office. Um, and of course, most U.S. presidents walk in lockstep with Israel, but uh, Trump has taken it to a new level. Mm -hmm. And and my feeling is that uh, Netanyahu and Trump and uh, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia um, would like to see uh, would like to have a pretext to attack Iran, even mm -hmm. though Iran does not pose a threat. Uh, they, they don't have nuclear weapons. The only Middle Eastern country that has nuclear weapons is Israel. Mm -hmm. uh, but shortly before the assassination which of the uh, top nuclear scientist, which was an act of state terrorism, mm -hmm. um, Pompeo, the Secretary of State, uh, and Netanyahu and uh, bin Salman, the, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia, all met in Riyadh to strategize about Iran. Pompeo actually flew to Riyadh in a secret uh, secret trip. Mm. Um, and then Pompeo visited Israel, the West Bank, the Golan Heights, and several Gulf countries, again, to discuss Iran. Um, they, the U.S. military uh, sent an aircraft carrier back to the Gulf. Um, and B-52 bombers carried out a, a, a short notice long range mission in the, in the Middle East. Um, and so it apparently, it looks like um, Israel and the, and this, they followed the same pattern before uh, the U.S. killed um, Soleimani, who was the chief general in Iran, mm -hmm. um, by Pompeo, uh, going to the to the Middle East, traveling, meeting with these countries, um, that they would like to provoke Iran into retaliating for the assassination of this nuclear scientist to give the U.S. and Israel and or Israel a pretext to attack Iran, take out its nuclear facilities, which have been only used for peaceful purposes. And Iran was complying with the nuclear deal, the Iran nuclear deal, mm -hmm. uh, and doing everything it was supposed to, according to the inspectors and the International Atomic Energy Agency. And yet Trump pulled out of the deal. Netanyahu convinced him to pull out. Biden has said he wants to rejoin the deal. And what uh, Trump and Netanyahu want to do is to prevent that from happening. Um, they don't want Biden to pursue diplomacy with Iran. They want to go in and uh, use military force against Iran. So I think that's what this was all about. But the um, Iranian president, Rouhani, said that they would respond to the assassination in the proper time. And um, they, Rouhani said the Iranian nation is smarter than falling into the trap of the Zionists. That means Israel and, and the U.S. supporting them. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and then Rouhani said they are, they are thinking to create chaos um, now, the parliament in Iran um, voted to stop future UN inspections of Iran's nuclear sites. And if they continue with that, that would probably deep six uh, the deal, the Iran nuclear deal. Um, they have said they're going to increase the enrichment of uranium, which they have a right to do because the U.S. pulled out of the uh, the uh, nuclear deal. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll see what happens. What Trump and Netanyahu are trying to do is to sabotage Biden um, and, uh, and and keep the U.S. and Iran from 
uh, diplomatic relations. And this is, this is of course, very worrisome because uh, a war in that area could, uh, could have disastrous consequences, not just for the people of Iran, for, but for the people of the region and for the people of the world, indeed. Yeah, I just have to step back for a second and just recognize how I, I just I don't understand. I cannot I cannot put myself in the place of these leaders. You know, I try to understand, like, even though I completely disagree with everything they're doing on ethics, on eth- an ethical, moral level or any you know, all of that. But it's like I just cannot understand how even on a strategic level, how you could even have a war with Iran. I mean, it's not like Iraq. It's not like Afghanistan. It's not like Yemen. It's not like any of these other countries, the United States or Israel is really engaged in, in armed conflict with. I just can't get my head around that. And I mean, what is the purpose of trying to get into a full scale war with Iran right now? I mean, what, what do you think about that? Well, Israel thinks that Iran poses an existential threat to their existence. Um, I don't think Iran's ever attacked Israel. Uh, as I said, Israel's the only country that has nuclear weapons. Um, in terms of um, of the United States, um, Trump has basically turned over his Israel policy, not just to Netanyahu, but also to uh, Pompeo, Mike Pompeo and Mike Pence, who are self-identified evangelicals. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Christian Zionists believe that uh, Jesus is not going to return until the temple in Jerusalem is rebuilt. And that's going to happen only if it remains under Jewish rather than Palestinian control. And, you know, so this is, and of course, what Jews don't understand when they support this is that, uh, if you take this scenario to its logical conclusion, the Jews either convert to Christianity or they get killed. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is this is what uh, what motivates them. And Trump has pandered to his evangelical base, knowing that he needs them uh, to stay in power. And uh, of course, he plays right into Netanyahu's hands. Um, and, uh, you know, this is, uh, this is, this is really an outrage. And, and, and also there are, um, there are, uh, laws that are being violated, the Leahy law and the arms Con- export control act. Um, you know, you're not supposed to, U S is not supposed to give military assistance to countries that to engage in human gross human rights violations. Mm-hmm. And, uh, of course, Israel, uh, there, there are allegations of war crimes against Israel in the International Criminal Court now. But nevertheless, the United States gives Israel $3.8 billion annually in military aid. And Biden's new Secretary of State, Tony Blinken, said that Biden would not tie military assistance to Israel uh, to any political decisions that it makes, period, full stop. Mm. Um, and th- that's also very worrisome. Um, you know, I, I don't think Biden will go quite as far uh, as Trump has of pandering to Israel, but uh, I think he'll he'll do plenty of it. 